I just needed to get out of the house. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to talk to you about life beyond on-camera flash. To that end, I want to introduce you to two outstanding, yet very different, portable, battery-powered, pro-caliber monolights. Profoto's $1,700, 250-watt second, 3.3-pound B10, and Broncolor's $2,500, 800-watt second, 8.2-pound Cirrus 800L. Now, this is not a review, but rather an invitation to explore life beyond your hot shoe-based flash units. But before we get into it, a few words from our friendly department of crass commercialism. First, I'm delighted to tell you that Streets of New York, the book, is back in stock if you are like us and miss New York City. I think you might really enjoy the 82 pages of images I made in the two years just prior to going into lockdown. Head over to www.3bmep.com books to learn more or order your copy. Second, we are now accepting appointments for half-hour, one-on-one, live video sessions to explore with you everything from portfolio reviews to social media strategy, gear selection, and more. If this is interesting to you, head over to www.3bmep.com booking to take a closer look or schedule a session. Finally, if you like what you see here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below, Consider using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links or dropping coffee money via PayPal, both available in the show notes below. Better yet, please consider joining us as a patron on Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it. Let me provide you with context that may help you get a sense of where you are in your flash photography journey and if this stuff is really interesting and appropriate for you. When I bought the then-revolutionary Canon EOS 3, 35mm film camera way back in 1998, I also invested in the brand new Speedlight designed for it. Canon's 550EX was the first of the EOS-era flagship on-camera flash units. It was so good. Integrated autofocus assist beam, second curtain and high-speed sync, tilt, swivel, and zoom head with integrated pull-out diffuser, built-in wireless system, a guide number of 180, that it remained the apex of their flash system for the next six years. I eventually owned three of them, though they gathered dust for years until I briefly returned to them for portrait work, headshots, for a year or two beginning around 2014, I think. It was as if I just bought them. Truly flawless, fit for purpose, small, easy. I still have all three of them. Brilliant at close distances for headshots. In that period when they were gathering dust, call it 2002, I moved to a dramatically more powerful pro photo pack system, specifically for dance photography inspired by the work of the wonderful Lois Greenfield. But once I'd successfully completed a project to capture dancers mid-flight, other priorities and complexities took over. I ended up selling the 7A2400 generator and a pair of twin tube heads for about as much as I'd paid for them closing in on 10 large. Between that system's performance and the return on investment, I developed a soft spot for the brand. Fast forward a decade and a half. In 2018, Profoto introduces the battery-powered off-camera flash B10. It's the same year Broncolor announces its F160 LED, but that one, beautiful as it is, is a continuous monolight. I think both are really cool, wonderful industrial design, though neither matters to me. That's because by 2018, I am all about street photography. More specifically, as I've come to fully understand only recently thanks to the amazingly insightful and poetic Joel Meyerowitz, I am and remain to this day a portrait photographer using the street as studio wherever I find it no flash necessary. Hold that thought. A week after Photo Kina, Claudia and I lead our first photo walk in New York City, and our friend Dan Wang joins us. He brings along a Broncolor Cirrus 800L with a softbox mounted to a boom pole just for grins, strong guy, and shares it with anyone in our group who wants to give it a go. How does one pass up an opportunity like that? I don't. Fascinating. 
flash photography on the street very different from what Bruce Gilden or Mark Cohn do. The seed has been planted. Fast forward to 2019. Another friend, Cliff Pickett, hey Cliff, asks if I'd like to try out Profoto's then brand new clever little C1 Plus, a combined flash unit continuous light for smartphones, again in New York City. How does one pass up an opportunity like that? I don't. I like it, even if I find it underpowered. But to me, street photography is about a moment of casual intimacy with a stranger, a moment of connection that reassures me the world is not a terrible place. It is a collaboration, a co-creation, and the last place I want to spend any time futzing with gear, as in, I only want one body, one lens, no flash. So, that was that, until the lockdown hit four months ago. Things got dark, like this. And that was when I decided it was time to literally and metaphorically lighten up. Claudia and I noodled a bit about a project to get us going and quickly decided that we wanted to do something completely different. An on-location fashion shoot with Flash. Which makes no sense if you know only me. Not to be too Captain Obvious about it, but fashion is not my jam. But it makes perfect sense if you know anything about Claudia. Fashion, editorial, and commercial shoots were her thing back in the day. Makeup artist, stylist, photographer's assistant, location scout on high-end shoots across Europe and North Africa. I bet you didn't know that about her. She was definitely the director on this shoot. And when I was shooting, the grip. Of course, at a different point, I was the grip, too. Anyway, a few quick calls here, an email thread or two there, and soon enough, with the help of our friends at Broncolor, Hasselblad, Sony, Viltrox, and B&H, we are on location, literally blocks from our home, with our model lore, face masks in place, Hassi X1D2 paired with their 90mm and Broncolor's Cirrus 800L on the one hand, Sony's A7R4 paired with a few lenses and Pro Photos B10 on the other. 
The only other pieces of gear were the wireless triggers and a five-in-one reflector slash diffuser. So before I go any further, big shout outs to all of you guys. Broncolor and Hasselblad have been staples in the fashion industry for decades. Sony has been leading the way in full frame mirrorless for the past five years. Viltrox is a super interesting up and coming lens manufacturer. Hold that thought for an upcoming video. And of course, B&H, some of our favorite guys, a globally recognized New York City retailer with outstanding selection, inventory, and customer service. So please check them all out. Thank you guys, one and all. All of which, in this short video, is a long way of saying one. When you want to move to the next level in flash photography, the first thing you want to do is move your flash off camera. This allows you to change how the shadows envelop your subject or light a larger area. You can do this with a speed light, but I think I'm asking you to hold too many thoughts. What the heck? Hold that thought because two, the second thing you'll likely want to do is add modifiers to soften the quality of the light, especially for portraiture. Fashion depends. Harsh light can be daring, risque, and cool, but to the extent that you do want to soften light, no matter what kind of built-in or add-on diffuser you use with an on-camera flash, either the small surface area of those diffusers or the reduced output through a larger diffuser will only whet your appetite for three, a lot more power. This allows you to A, drive much bigger diffusers with dramatically more surface area, B, move the flash much farther away, C, cover a larger area, or D, do all of those. Four. Both of these systems generated lovely results. No need to pixel feed. Like this. Now that I'm looking back, I can see all the signs I tried to fill in the cracks that were spread in my mind, but I was all alive. The fascinating thing is you can get great results with just about any camera lens flash combination if you know what you want to do, that is, you have a very specific vision, you know what you're doing, that is, you know how to select and use the gear you need, you have a model like Lore, and D, if you don't have one, you book an assistant. Let's wrap this up. If you think you might be ready to move beyond speed lights, which one of these make more sense for you? As always, it's about where you've been, where you are, and where you want to be. If you're coming from, say, a Canon or Nikon speed light, if you're used to convenience and lightweight, if you rely heavily on TTL metering or high-speed sync from focal plane shutter cams, if you're a one-man band or, say, a husband and wife team doing event photography where speed and lightweight rule, yeah, the Profoto B10 is a very natural segue to off-camera flash at the next level of power and modifiers. It's dramatically smaller and lighter than the Broncolor, has an equally complete and robust range of modifiers, and their brilliant little smartphone app used in conjunction with their dedicated Kinect triggers for Canon, Nikon, Sony, or Fujifilm allow you to dial in pretty much whatever you want in what I regard as the most intuitive way possible. And you can always use your assistant as a human C-stand. But if you're all about driving big modifiers, covering big spaces, using your flash day in and day out. Perhaps if you work with leaf shutter-based systems where sync speed is limited only by the top speed of those shutters and are more old school, manual metering only, baby. This does sound a lot like fashion photography, doesn't it? The power, build quality, and interchangeable battery packs of the Cirrus 800L may appeal. Although I confess, I like how the modifiers attach on the uh, pro photo a little bit better. With the Broncolor, at that point, you're going to need a C-stand and likely a pile of sandbags. On location, you'll definitely have to have your assistant holding on tight to that C-stand. The much bigger softbox we used with the Broncolor acted as a giant sail, even in light winds. Of course, there are many other units within each brand from which to choose, battery-powered or AC only, and there are other scenarios like dance photography, but this is not that kind of video. Suffice it to say, you can get bigger, heavier, more powerful, and more expensive units from Profoto. You can get smaller, lighter, less powerful, and less expensive units from Broncolor. There are also... 
other units out there. I hear good things, for example, about the much more accessibly priced Godox and its kissing cousin Explorer, but I haven't worked with either of them. Others swear by Ellen Chrome. Although I've never worked with Ellen Chrome either, I think it's fair to say that along with Broncolor and Profoto, these three brands represent the pinnacle of off-camera flash. Of course, there are other ways to skin the cat too, from ganging a bunch of speed lights together to using continuous lighting, but I'd suggest monolights are a better way to go. The less futzing, the happier you'll be. That's really it for now. For us, this was an excuse to get out of our own heads during the pandemic and share that experience with you. I hope this small video prompts you to explore further afield too. There is a whole new visual vocabulary instead of specs like flash duration and recycle time out there. Although if you're using speed lights, you already know all about that for you to explore.